I know that you've all been prepared for this, but I thought I'd just remind you just the same. Can you handle that? Blondie. Game over, man. Game over. What the fuck are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do? Because pure evil. I want to buy some uh, radio ad time. Do a treat. We're Irish. Welcome back to another episode. I'm your host, Vincent Green. I'm your host, Noel John Tui. We got Carmack in the back. This is Invasion of the Poly Snatchers. Let's get to it, motherfuckers. <laughs> All right, Noel, we're back. And this time we're fucking selling some candy. We're the candy men. We're yeah. the candy man. We're the candy whatever the fuck. Because I part this the reboot goes insane. Right. So first of all, no, we're going to talk a little bit about the original. Um, and then we're going to talk about uh, this year's follow up, the reboot, the, the reawakening of the Candyman or whatever yeah. the fuck you want to call it. I say it. reawakening because it seems to pay homage to the first one. Yeah. So it's not like a complete and total rehash or something like that. Kind of like way Halloween are doing. Kind it, of. You know yeah. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. A reboot, but like it's lazy. So we're just going well, to forget the other two it movies. It is lazy. I mean, this is what to do. They brought, you know, they brought back 70 something year old Schwarzenegger. And they brought back Linda Hamilton. <laughs> it's, it's what they do. Like, you yeah, know, it, shit. The, the, it's this getting is, too lazy now. It's getting it? too lazy. It's yeah. such a cop out, though. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, my God. I, I like that was That's the first thing I suppose I'd like to talk about. I enjoyed the first film so much more than the second film. Yeah. I thought the structure of, I thought was better. I thought it was easy to follow. I thought it didn't disappear up its own arse at any point. Yeah. I thought even just like the allegory of like racism, classism, gentrification, I thought it was smoothly inside the story and not like. Because I don't know, like mashed it, in or something. Like we spoke about gore. There's a difference having gore being an element of your story and having gore being your story. Yes. I mean, Candyman, the original from 1991, or sorry, 92, yeah. was the, it encapsulated all those things you talk about, racial, uh, the racial elements of, like, you know, uh, uh, Cabrini Green and the gentrification of the neighborhood or the problems with the projects near the 90s in America. Yeah. Incorporated all those things, but it didn't just like slam them in your yeah. face. And the problem with Candyman and the new one from 2021 um, by Nia DaCosta. A lot of stories nowadays is they don't know how to incorporate things yes. without making it their story. Yes. And that's the problem. With that's stuff. a really good way you of putting I mean? it. You know what I mean? And that's the problem because uh, elements of your story can be many things. But to make one element your story just makes your story bland and it cuts away so much of your audience. Yeah. And that's the problem that the new Candyman Man faced because a lot of people saw it as a racist movie. In a lot of ways it was. It was very racist against white people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, And I'm not just saying that because I'm a white dude. It's the truth. Like, you know, and... When you make a movie that clearly alienates 50% or 30% or whatever your audience is, you're not going to have a wide success. And I think you can incorporate elements of uh, racial tension or racial issues nowadays in America. You can incorporate that into your story, but make um, without alienating people, but making it a, a sole purpose of your story in a lot of ways when they expected something completely different. Yeah. just alienates a large portion I, of your audience. A large, in that, in that remake, I thought personally that a lot of times, like you said, the narrative, the story wasn't about Candyman, mm -hmm. and like, I, and I think it's, I think everyone, I think you should have your say, and everyone should understand. I love art, like artistic intent, but yeah. also like you're also there to watch a horror movie. Yeah, just watch a horror movie yeah. and have at the end go. That was a great horror movie, and if you can do a lot more inside of that, yeah, that's great. You, you're uh, supposed to be able to say this was a great horror movie that served as an allegory for such and such. Yeah, but, well, that's what the first yeah. film was. Exactly, yeah. first film made you feel for the projects. And and how people had just moved in and they were forgotten about, you yeah. know, uh, gangs had taken same. over. And there was the the, the woman um, who said, "Look, we're not we're not all like those ass assholes downstairs." Yeah. Oh, um, Anthony's mother. Uh, Anthony's mother. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, she goes, "We're not all like those assholes downstairs." And you know, it, 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 it made, you made felt sorry for the characters, but at the same time, it was only ever like thirty minutes, twenty minutes, fifteen minutes away to somebody. Was Anne Marie McCoy. Anne Marie McCoy. That's why I got the McCoy from earlier for a second recording. That's what it was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, 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 you felt for them. But at the same time, the story was always about Candyman. It came back to it, and I, I just loved that. It just felt like a horror movie. I and can... when you stop to think about it, you realize that it was layered. Yeah. But when I went to the back one, it felt like it, like they, they made a, f a, a film about like s today's society, yeah. racial tensions, uh, racism, and then you were like, and they just threw a Candyman kill or two yeah. into it. I, I think the big difference is. That part one told a political story, but used Candy. Uh, like it, it was pretty much it was kind of like they used the, the guise of Candyman to tell a story about racial tension, uh, uh, usher, uh, being ostracized from society, um, uh, poverty, 
all these things that have suffered the people in the lowest rung of society for generations. Quite often, people for, of color. Yeah, no, especially in America. Uh, in, yeah, you know in, what I mean, in, like, like you know, yeah, like disproportionately yeah. people of color. But when people say people of color, but everybody of every color is poor around the world. Like, that makes no sense to me. In yeah. that neighborhood, it disproportionately impacted people of color. In that neighborhood, because there's poor white people, there's poor Chinese people, there's poor Japanese, people, there's poor people of every color. So I don't want to say that it's dispro- poor people, disproportionate people of color. Just there's poor not people. poor people in Monaco. You know, they yeah. just won't have it. Yeah, but you know <laughs> what I mean. I'm just saying that like every part of the world is di- uh, different colors of people that are poor. Yeah. Right, it's not just one sect of people, but in this neighborhood, it disproportionately the poor people or people of black, uh, black descent or African descent or whatever you want to say. Um, it's very hard to say something politically correct when you're mentioning someone's yeah. race nowadays. But I think what the original did that was different than the reboot is the original used the guise of a horror movie to tell a political movie, uh, to tell like, a story about race, uh, as I said, uh, society being ostracized, society in poverty, right, through the guise. But what the reboot did was it told a polit- it made a political statement or tried to make a political statement disguised as a Candyman movie, yeah. not through the guise of a Candyman movie. About halfway through, totally it, I did find things. you know I, I watched it. I came out of it. I who did I go to see it with? Did I go see it with you? Yeah, me yeah, and Lorraine. We, we went to it together. Mm. And I remember, you know, Lorraine asked me, you asked me, we asked each other, how'd you feel about that? And I remember just saying, you know what, I need to sleep on it. Because I don't like to rush to judgment, but I did definitely feel like halfway through that film when we were actually in the theater watching it, I was like, "What is this about?" Yeah, it was like, Where, "Where's Candyman?" Yeah, you know what I mean. And even the line, the part where I noticed today is like, "Do you remember um, uh, the main uh, what's the main girl? Uh, his love interest. Sorry, played by Tiana Paris, Brianna Carey, her brother. <clears throat> Excuse me, uh, uh, Troy, uh, the gay dude. Yeah, and he was saying, goes, um, oh, should we summon Candyman?' And she was like." Who who do that? And then it instantly goes to a high school. And this part made no sense to me. It doesn't fit in the rest of the movie whatsoever. It's just a way of It needed saying, a kill. It's just a way of no, saying... But you know what I mean? It needed a kill. Who would call Candyman? Dumb white people. That's literally what that scene is. She, her saying, who would call... Who the hell would call Candyman? And Nia Costa, through the guy, which is actually Jordan Peele, you know, who I consider to be one of the most racist directors out there at the moment. But like, it literally, it's him saying, dumb white people. That's who would call Candyman. Dumb white girls. You know this, what I mean? Like This is some white people shit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like It makes no yeah. sense to me. Like, like, like The whole point of the first movie was you don't go into a place that you don't belong and you start rousing up things that you don't understand. That's kind of what the first I, one was. I, I, you know I, what I mean? Like, And I, this one is just kind of like, it just kept force feeding different um, agendas down your throat where it kind of forgot about the mythology in a lot of ways and it just kept trolling in every now and again. Here's a bit of Candyman. Here's a bit of Candyman. And then it was like political agenda. Throwing down your throat, and that's yeah. I, I thought that when the when, when I thought would seeing representation because people want to see themselves represented, and I thought you know, um, you know, the black superheroes, uh, Shang Chi was you know, there was an Asian man to be put 20 years ago, he would have been a white guy, yeah, might have been Matt Damon or something, yeah. And, he's and, and I, I always thought by anything that, so that, that intentionally yeah. says, like, no, I, under no circumstances am I having somebody white. Yeah. Or am I having somebody, you know, the film that like if that if you said I'm never doing it, that then that's bullshit. Yeah. So you know, I was like fully supportive of 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 all of these films that have come out lately. This Jordan is the Peele. only yeah, but Jordan Peele kind of crossed a line a little bit with me and pissed me off. Yeah, when like, he don't said do that. Like, yeah, he said yeah. I'm not gonna get a white person because I've seen that movie and I kind of get it. I get it like ha- and you should have a moment yeah. where people where where directors and actors of color are finally getting the representation that they disproportionately did not mm. have. But don't ever say that you're intentionally going to ostracize anyone ever. Yeah, because you should be hired on the merits yeah. of your abilities and yeah. not by the color of your skin. And that was it. Like, the same even, thing he's asked and for. And it was just like, it, it mean? got too far because even when when Get Out, I thought like again, if we we're going to say when I watched Get Out, I thought like the the, the narrative and the horror film were one it was a smooth film yeah and it made sense as a and story and it made sense as a story and yeah. it made you think and it's a great movie and it's a great movie yeah. and it was thought provoking and he got lost in himself and he got lost in himself yeah, yeah. and I thought it was I thought it was a great movie and it was it said so much yeah and it, it, and it even taught you and you kind of went wow what an excellent artistic endeavour from a man that I just knew to be a comedian yeah you know he was the uh, and he started a renaissance of comedians entering into the horror genre. yeah like, you know, and, and he was good at it and yeah. then there was us yeah. Which wasn't as good as it's Get Out. Movie, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, to say what well, is a terrible movie. The I, 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 film's I, terrible. I, I actually, this is probably a bigger. Every white character is completely monotone. 
Yeah. He does this all, all the time. What is like? You can't say that you want to fight against racism on that one hand and in the other hand be racist. <laughs> you know what I mean? That makes no sense to me. I just thought also, I, I had I literally felt nothing, and that's yeah. probably a bigger. Yeah, like you I know, thought, like I, I I was watching it kind of going. Hmm. I don't I don't know. Like I mean, first and foremost, you have to understand that a movie should be well, have one shallow endeavor at the very start of it, yeah, and that is be entertaining. Yeah, like, like throw everything you want into and get that. out is yeah. amazingly entertaining. But, Get Out is amazingly entertaining. Just, but it needs to be entertaining. And then you want to say, what if we did? Oh, what a great character development. And then you can kind of start telling interweaving stories. And then it can become Game of Thrones, the first seven seasons, the only ones that exist. Or it can become anything you want. It can expand The Matrix and all of these films that try to try to expand and expand. And it can be done. But first and fucking foremost, make sense and be entertaining. Yeah, exactly. And this the, the follow-up film failed in that in spectacular yeah, fashion yeah, to me. I, and I, and yeah. it annoyed me more when I went back and watched Candy and went, this is fucking cool. Yeah. This is my kind of jam. This yeah. is my kind of horror movie. It, it shows you though straight away when you watch like a movie from 1992 and watch its reboot with version or whatever back to back and it shows you how much better horror was from back then than it is now. Yes. And I think the reason, in my opinion, I know Jordan Peele didn't direct this and I won't like keep harping on about Jordan Peele because Nia DaCosta directed it. He only co-wrote and produced it. But um, it's clear to see his message, his agenda is all over this. His fingerprints is all over the story. Like, you know, I think the difference is when you look at Get Out, he wrote a horror story, he made a horror movie with a uh, political undertone. Yeah. Now he makes political movies with horror undertones. Yeah. You know what I mean, though? Like, and that's I, why I, 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 I the agree. On that, on that, I agree with you 100%. Yeah. Because yeah, then, then your man's descent, I know when he's, he's descent into, I guess, essentially becoming the Candyman, like the Candyman ascending, the Candyman coming back, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 I found myself not really caring because I I, I I didn't it was like when I watched uh what was the the alien prequel uh the first one Prometheus Prometheus yeah it was like when I watched that eventually I was just what what actually going on yeah. where's the xenomorphs yeah where's the xenomorphs what's yeah. like where is this headed and I, all of a sudden I felt like just that disengaged yeah and this is what brings me back to that flat point just be entertaining mm. Just make I'll, 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 I'll literally like if I was at give, home give I would have candy man yeah give me candy where's, man where's yeah. Tony Todd yeah. Last shot of the movie. Last shot Are of the movie. Are you fucking kidding me? The aged CGI you Tony know, Todd. Are you fucking kidding me? Well, Tony Todd looks great now. Why can't we just use Tony Todd? Yeah. Who's this other dude? I've actually seen him. He's aged really, really, really well. Exactly. Makeup. Yeah. He's good to go. He's Candy been rich man for is... most of his life, probably. Of course, he's aged really well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Almost like that. Oh, that actor. Uh, yeah, who was being rich since she was nineteen. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure stress. She eats well or something. Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah sure yeah. stress lines don't even know where her face are. Yeah, you know yeah. What I mean? like, but he did. I would love to have Tony. And Tony Todd had a great be my. I forgot how much I love the be my victim line. Yeah. Be my victim. Yeah. And, you know, and then then he starts framing her for murders and stuff. I just thought it was. First film was just such a good. What, what did he say? It was like, well, the stories weren't enough. You don't believe in me or something. Shit yeah, like do that. you believe in me? Yeah. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like, oh shit! Like yeah. that presence. This the second movie is no presence. Yeah. Like, and that, that's not. I'm um, sorry. I'm gonna check. That this. was it because I think. And that's part... not. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Abdul Mateen the seconds. That's not his. Just that's. Uh, that's not his. I hope I got his name right. Um, uh, that's not his fault. He's actually very good. Actor. He's a very. He's very good in the film. Yeah. But like I and he, and he was just, very good in the film. Like yeah. he did actually have presence. Yeah. But it doesn't and he's matter a big who you're. Fucker to really mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, exactly. You know, so he's physically he, present. So if, like, if 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 he turns from a quite sweet, artistic. Yeah. Kind of man and then starts turning dark. It's it's a scary transition. It takes but... him a very long time to get that arm checked out. Yeah. <laughs> very long time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like I'm like. Dude, do you know what a dermatologist is? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? A gangreneologist yeah, is like. You I mean, need one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like fucking hell. Sorry, like. is this normal? I'm just finding this metal bar in my arm <laughs> and the flesh has rotted away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'd give it two weeks. Yeah, I'd give it two weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like Um yeah, I don't know. I, I, I the first film I thought Jake, the the kid was a great character. Yeah. You know, he was this sweet little kid who was caught up in a very kind of like he was he was the victim of the way society had turned and stood on the poor people and it was just this kind of homeless kid but he still had a heart of gold yeah. he was and again he ended up caring about people i thought helen was a great character in the first yeah. one it's like she was trying to smoke every cigarette in the world i mm. loved it i loved every time they did a close-up to give her shadow face where her eyes were just like popping out 
Do you know, like, uh, like, is there like a bottom half of her face was shadow, a top half of her face was shadow, and her eyes were just there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the yeah. cigarette was in her hand, and the smoke just wafting up towards her face and shit. Like, every single close up was like that with her, though. Like, yeah. And in the music, dee, 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 you know what I mean? Like, it still had that. It was still like, obviously, the early 80s still had a bit of a hangover, or the early 90s had a bit of a hangover from the 80s in the mm. best way possible. And that's you could tell it was trying to age out of it and become a, a new kind of era of film, but it still had some of that stuff that made the 80s horror the great. great. The real nasty, like, you know, yeah, I mean? and, and body horror as well. But again, not for the sake of it, but when Candy, when she sees in, under Candyman's jacket and sees it, it's just essentially a beehive, yeah, yeah underneath yeah. a rib case. Like, oh, god, that's still a great shot, yeah. Turn, and he yeah. and Tony Todd got 23,000 for that scene because he got that one thousand dollars. They said, like, we want to use real bees, and he goes, I want one thousand dollars for every time I get stung, and he ended up with 23,000 dollars. Wow. So hopefully she did the same deal because yeah. they're all over her face. Yeah, God, there Tony was... Todd's got better aging, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was he was brilliant in it. Um, I, and again, I, I I always love like a supernatural horror where you are being hunted by it. It doesn't matter where if you're asleep, if mm. you're in in a in a cell with Very a like camera Freddy, on you. It? Yeah, if they had that Freddy, mm. it follows. You know, the list goes on and on because it it's it knows where you are. Like it's atta- yeah it's attached to you yeah. it knows where you are it's not an issue of distance and it's not an issue of putting four walls around you and barricading yourself in yeah. it's not it knows where you are and it can get to you yeah and he proves that he just shows up randomly at the hospital when he's floating he's over her in the bed do you remember in the police department where he shows up first and then the, is it the police department where she's in the underground car park yeah like you know what I mean he can show up anywhere he wants he's absolutely not like he's, he's connected to, to you yeah, yeah he's yeah. not just attached to Cabrini Green like you know and what I, mean? I, I the first one just had that horrible sense of impending doom yeah. the second one i i, I think i got it, it got caught caught up in all its side stories about his relationship and his relationship and to the artist to the art world one thing i did like about it though and i'll, I'll praise jordan peele and i'll pay, praise nia da costa for this is when they mentioned gentrification that the uh, her boyfriend her brother's boyfriend mentions like what your guys are doing now you know what I mean? Like, and I thought that was a fair criticism. And it's probably one of the only fair criticisms he makes at times in the movie because he's a bit, a bit heavy handed. Sorry, Nia Costa makes that she's a bit heavy, heavy handed, I think, with her with her messaging. Like, and I thought that was kind of clever. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it don't, it's kind of like saying that is you shouldn't criticize people for something that you're kind of doing. Now yeah, yourself. yeah, yeah. Like, and I thought that was clever storytelling, yeah. which is film lacks a bit at times, like the reboot. Like, yeah. that, you know what I mean? Like, I thought, like, I mean, I liked, uh, I can't think, uh, the only scene I thought the, the deaths in the um, showroom after the kind of the first exhibition that your man does was kind of a flop. And you're one with the Joy Division T-shirt, and she's going to have sex with the, I guess the, the art director, and uh, the I thought that was curator or yeah, the curator exactly. Mm-hmm. I thought that was fun. I thought that's what a horror film should be like. Yeah. This kind of like you get this is where you get your slasher kind of. And like, he's like must go faster. And he's yeah, like yeah. One he's and stuff strapped, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she, she I, I like she her trope gets. First off, neither film seems to know how hooks work. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, hooks yeah. stab and then would tear. Just he like yeah. decapitated a dog. Yeah, and fucking shit like, like that. He can't saw with a hook. He can't saw with a hook, like, man. That, like, like you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's like how does she cut off that dog's head? Like, yeah, you know you're like, thinking like, of a very big knife. Yeah, you're like, thinking of a machete. It like, seems to have I machete. Think about rules. an hour's work. Yeah, like you know what I mean? To cut off a Rottweiler's head, first of all, you have to kill the Rottweiler. Yeah. That's going to take at least 20 minutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Especially if you just brought a hook. Yeah. You'd be like, look, I have a chest of bees. Doug's like, I I actually have no comprehension. Yeah. What's going on. Doug's like, I'm a Rottweiler. I'm yeah. going to fuck you up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> do, do you not know what the Nazis used me for? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but, uh, but yeah, she, she gets her throat slit and he's like, are, are you being serious right now? <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. I thought that was fucking funny. And then, you know, like just the candy man kind of been seen in the mirror, but not being seen in the yeah. real. And I thought, and it's yes. It's not really the candy man. It's their bullshit version of a candy man yeah exactly but i thought all right this is this is what I, I i want you need scenes like this first and foremost entertain me yeah exactly and that scene was entertaining and then i just found it what got back to the studio apartment and the struggling artist uh, and the upwardly mobile uh wife rihanna or girlfriend girlfriend i think yeah it's his girlfriend yeah, yeah. And he's she, living in her her apartment. She's uh, like she works, and he's yeah, yeah. He's he's the struggling artist, and yeah. she's the the woman who's going places. Um, and and then I just I didn't care. Yeah, that's the problem though. Like you don't care about these like uh, characters in these movies. If you yeah. feel like you're being uh, shoved an agenda down your throat, and that's yeah, the thing. I think maybe that's what it was. Because you know, I just found because like, I found you, I, I cared about absolutely everyone in the first one. Yeah, 
and even just the, the the story of how something like a candy man could happen not that it could happen you know but just like how somebody who wasn't a bad man can become so twisted yeah. by just what by, he, rage. Uh, by rage and yeah. by vengeance injustice. and by injustice mm. and it just gives birth to this and he's almost like a mirror of what happened to him yeah um i thought that that's cool it's right. twisted and it's not shut down your throat with any, yeah. any sort of political message it was just there yeah exactly and it was historically accurate and correct yeah. like you know yeah. what i mean and it was heartbreaking yeah that's what i like that's what i liked about it because they're like look at how times war and we're going to encapsulate the 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 story of the african american in an interrelation interracial relationship back then by using one man as an example of how it often happened how it often yeah. went for people of color back then when if they if they fucking dared like you know what i mean fall in love you know what i mean like, they yeah. fell in love with someone that was white oh, oh my god such a crime like people need to get over like back in the day like fucking hell like and um like and you could be and he could and oh 100 that's what i'm it. saying like that's that's what I, I what i loved about the first one is they encapsulated many stories that happened when people tried to have inter uh, racial relationships for a long time in america a long time around the world and they encapsulated the, the torture and the torment and the injustice of all their stories through uh the guise of the candy man's mythos mm. and that's clever storytelling that's clever storytelling you know, yeah none of that's in the reboot yeah none of that clever storytelling they just try to shove things down your neck not subtly you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like, give me a little taste of that cake. Don't give me four slices at once. Just yeah. get a spoon feed it to me. Sometimes you got to spoon feed it to people and be subtle about it. And then at the end, the message should resonate afterward, not during the movie. If you're thinking about the message during the movie, you're distracted from the storyline of the movie. And yeah. afterwards, the, you should concentrate on the storyline of the movie and afterwards, the message should resonate with you if it's done correctly. Yeah. But if you feel like stuff has been shoved down your throat the whole way through it, it's like you said, after all, I just didn't care. Yeah. And that's what it is, because you're like, I'm not here for a political sem seminar. I'm here yeah. for to see Candyman cut up dumb people that say their name five times in the fa in the mirror. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they're black or white or if they're Asian or if they're fucking Mandarin. Who cares? Yeah. It doesn't matter what Candyman person... linger. Exactly, exactly. That's yeah, what it was is. summoned, like, you know. It, yeah, it's about the legend of Candyman. It's not about the people that are summoning him. And stop trying to fucking paint this picture that the world has to be racially divided and all these things have to be put into movies. Yeah. Because it doesn't, it, there's a forum for this kind of thing. And you can do it subtly and have that message resonate afterwards, like the original Candyman does. Because when you watch it more and more and more, you see the different little Easter eggs that they put into it in the way to tell their story. It's very cleverly done, you know? But the second one, sorry, not the second one, the reboot, it's just like, look at this and they sit back and try to admire their work. They're like, oh, look what I'm doing. Look at the yeah. message I'm putting out into the world. And they sit back and admire I it. admire the message. And the story Shouldn't suffers be. constantly for it. Yeah. It's like, I'm like, oh, here's a 10-minute lull. Why you need Acosta and Jordan Jordan Peele yeah. and sit back and admire the work. And who's the, sorry, who's the third writer? Um, uh, Wynn Rosenfield. And they just sit back and admire the work. And the story suffers constantly for it. Just like, here's our message. Look, are we great? Play collectivism. In the like, fuck, and then in, I'm like, where's my kills? Where's yeah. my beats? Yeah. You got 90 minutes. Tell me your fucking slasher story. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, first and foremost, be that. Because in the first one, there was the, the Helen and Trevor. And uh, Trevor was clearly like having sex with one of his students. Basically, 100%. 100%. But they didn't, yeah. they never had to bog down and get into the language of that. We knew it was he was said, a slime bag. It was, we knew he was a slime bag and it was told with glances. Yeah. And it was just told with like him being distant, or or when she gets him, arrested, him. he she called and yeah. he wasn't there, mm. and that tells you so much. And I and that's and that saves time because yeah. I, I knew what was going on with her in her personal life, and and it was all about the candy man. Yeah, exactly. And, was, and, and that's clever because that can, the personal life's over here because it's not the central focus yeah. of the story. Candy man is yes. Her relationship, her suffering, her uh, descent into madness or her descent into yeah. infamy, notoriety or whatever you want to call it. That's the central focus. And it keeps it goes every now and again, Xander Berkeley, come over here. We want to show what's going on in her personal life. Now, Xander Berkeley, fuck off now, please. Yeah. Candy man, come back. Death, murder, death, murder, myth, yeah. mythology. Xander Berkeley, come back. And then every now and again, if there's a lull in the story to tell a different story. Whereas in this is the told her story. Go, oh, look how clever we are. Step back from it. Forgot to tell the Candyman story. Yeah. 10, 15 minutes later, they step back into it and go, oh, we're going to kill five people randomly thought, in a bathroom. Yeah, yeah. And then, and it, you know what I mean? And like, even kind of kill them from the perspective of a girl that's in the toilet stall. Yeah. Um. Sometimes, actually, that's done really well. I just didn't think that this is one of those times, you yeah. know, where... Show me some gore. Yeah, show me some gore. But I thought, like, the Anthony and Brianna's relationship, like, falling apart, I thought was just 
fucking tortured. So draggy. So draggy. Like. like, you could tell that story in 15 minutes less screen time. You could tell that, but the thing is, again, with, with phone with, calls. With glan- with, yeah, with phone calls, with interactions, with like, text messages. Text messages or something like that. You can tell it, you can literally just have it, you know, nuanced. And you can have it done with, again with glances. Him literally. painting gets a text message. The text message comes up on the screen for the audience to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can go and respond, or he just ignores. He, or he, even that, even if he just looks at it and he goes to respond, it. and then he actually just ignores it, but in his pocket. Or, or he looks there. at his hand and starts picking at her. Yeah, and that creates distance. Out. Yeah. But I thought it was fucking torture. She moved in with her. She moved back in with her brother, and he's like, "If he comes around here, I'm going to kick his ass." Yeah. And you're like, I'm like, like, "This is candy, man." Yeah, he's like, "I'm going to kick his ass." Like. Dude, you're gonna lose that fight. You are going to lose that fight. Have you seen the size of Anthony? The, the size his of pecs are like three feet thick. Yeah, you exactly, know what I mean. Like yeah. he's gonna kick the fuck out of he's you. Dude. Fu- yeah, he's probably more dangerous than Candyman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to summon Candyman. This dude lives here. He's yeah, gonna kick yeah. the fuck out of you. And he, again, I, I thought I couldn't. I couldn't actually critique um, Anthony. Sorry, what was his name? Um, yeah, yeah, Abdul Mateen the um, second. I, I think you have to look at the cheat sheet. Um, well, yeah, that is impressive. I couldn't critique him at all. I think he was put into a very blasé film. Yeah. Oh, he was really good in it. And he was really, really good in and it. And so was, uh, is it Tiona Paris? Uh, Tiona Paris. That played Brianna. Uh, yeah, she's really good in it She's too. really, really good in it. I just thought it was a misuse of resources. Which it really did, exactly. Me, like, and this was definitely what the, yeah. the, the actual story, because all they had, all they had to work with was a script. And yeah. they went in and did the absolute damnedest they could with it and it, and it, and it showed. Yeah. But I just thought that the, the pacing was wrong. The, the, the violence was wrong. Just the, it got the fundamental of horror wrong. Be scary. Be entertaining. Have some yeah, kills. Like person. a slasher movie needs slashing. Yeah, you know, like a, 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 whatever. It's kind of like you know in um, uh, Nightmare on Elm Street when Freddy's not butchering people in dreams, the downtime is filled with Nancy trying to figure the fuck out yeah. what's going on. And that stress and, yeah. is maintained so and, perfectly. Yeah, exactly, like, you know what I mean? And it, Exactly, because you're using anxiety, but in a different way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, so in this, as I said to you, it just stands back and admires his work too much. In the first one, anytime there was a lull, Xander Berkeley came in, personal story, mm. or was her finding out a bit more about Candyman and a bit more about Candyman. In this, the parts where he found out about Candyman were secondary to his relationship with, um, what's her name, Bridget, is it? Brianna. <clears throat> Brianna, sorry. And it was secondary to that. Like, oh, tell me a human story, yeah. But I don't want it, I want it to be tertiary. In a slasher movie, especially. I want that to be tertiary to, especially if you're doing a reboot and you're trying to catch a new audience, the two main things should be the resurgence of the main antagonist and the mythology behind the main antagonist because this, if you're, you're going to end up covering the same grounds as the first one. Because if you make an original movie, the two main things there should be establishing the mythology and introducing your main antagonist. So if you're going to reboot, which means the reason you reboot is to capture a new audience. So you have to cover some of the same ground. So your main two aspects of the movie should be establishing your central antagonist and uh, and establishing your mythology. Yeah. And then the personal stories become tertiary. And that's how you do a 90 minute horror movie, yeah. right? But in this, it was like, well, let's establish that uh, Coleman Domingo, who's an amazing actor, who fe- feared the uh, walking dead. Let's throw him in every now and again bit mythology puppeteers whatever that's kind yeah, of cool yeah. or whatever you know what i mean though like and then but and then for the next 15 20 minutes tortured artist really yeah really do i need to see tortured artist for 15 minutes give me five and a couple of missed phone calls yeah 10 missed phone calls back to painting that's all i need to even see. like one of the actually it was a good kill i have to say with the art critic yeah where you see from outside of the yeah apartment. i thought that was actually a very cool kill yeah yeah where she's just going and going along the glass and being being murdered, but yeah, no, you're absolutely right. Um, and especially when there's just two films in over twenty, over nearly thirty years, twenty nine years, yeah. which in horror movie terms, no, there's two, there's two sequels to the original. Oh, there is two. Jeez, I forgot about that. <coughs> it's been so long since I watched them. Yeah, I've only seen the sequels once, I think. So when was the newest one? Um, uh, bar bar this. I'll which, check here. No, uh, yeah. I think it was mid nineties. Mid nineties. Yeah, God, it's been so long. Um. But I think when something goes, let's just say the point is that it goes so long without Candyman Two was ninety five. Yeah, so and that would be Candy three Man years. Three after. was probably ninety seven. It's so. Candyman Two was ninety nine. Ninety nine. Yeah, I didn't realize it was so recent. Wow. Okay, so it was twenty years. That's like, definitely a franchise Friday. Something. That's definitely a franchise Friday. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I can't remember the second or third one. I'm not even sure if I've seen the third one. I'll be yeah. blunt about no, it. No, I think I've seen it once, but I didn't realize it was so recent. I think. That I came to Candyman late enough, so I think I'm, originally I might watch the trilogy together. I remember like Candyman was such a cool thing because when I was a kid and really started to get into horror, 
I didn't want to look in the mirror and say Candyman five times. Yeah, no, I did on the psychopath. <laughs> well, Every yeah. time I hear bloody mirror, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll fuck, yeah, I'll meet this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> like, but you know, I mean, just as something you know? to just, and that's the great thing about me, as yeah. in like, you know, uh, everyone gets religious when they get on a plane. <laughs> it's just yeah. like, oh yeah, shit, I'm a Christian, you know, or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know, like suddenly yeah, you remember Jesus that. going to catch you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know um, I mean, so like, I do, I think it was just like, oh no, I don't believe it. I'm fucking with it. <laughs> you yeah, know? Exactly. And, yeah. and Candyman had that sway over me. Yeah. Um, even though it wasn't one of these franchises that I fell in love with as a kid that I watched over and over. Yeah. Like for Night- Nightmare on Elm Street, I watched it. Because it wasn't it, as successful. Yeah, actually, I think that was it. Because I had, a, like, I'm old enough to remember having a lot of these these films on VHS that yeah. I recorded Thanks off the TV. My late brother William, I've seen a lot of these. Wrestling really? Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, but I would record them and I would, you know, you'd skip through the ads then and you'd just go watch the movie. But you're right. That's a good point. The fact yeah. that it meant three times as money back. But it, it, um, yeah, but it's not. Not but Halloween, it's not, not Oh 13, my god, you know no. what I mean? Like, it's not Nightmare on Elm Street, it's not Child's Play. Look at its contemporaries, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, and it's just one of those things. Like, when you live in a small market like Ireland, especially in the mid to late 90s, when we are fucking our uh, our variety or our choice, our range of movies is very limited, <laughs> yeah, to like what we saw on TV. Good thing we like Die Hard, yeah, you know, what Jesus I mean? like, Christ. like we spoke about in Return to Critics, you know yeah. what I mean? Shout with the base and all them. But like, uh, and Eli, are you going to tell me a story, Eli? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I shout out to those boys. But we spoke about a bit on it, like why we like certain movies more than we like others is because we didn't have a wide variety of movies growing up. And if a movie yeah. wasn't uber successful, it didn't reach these small markets. And that's why I think a lot, like, yeah. sometimes we came to a candy man a bit later. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I remember Halloween, afraid of the 13th and... You know what I mean? These really famous horror franchises that became syndicated, that grew international fame very quickly. You know, that kind of way. Like, Yeah, I remember actually renting Candyman, I was thinking, from Dyla Video. But you're right, the range was... Yeah. Like, I mean, living in the year of Netflix or something. Yeah, and in the 90s, most of the movies we got to see were from the 80s. Yes. You know what I mean? That's why we yeah. fell in love with movies from the 80s. Because yeah. we were so behind the curve that we were, like, watching movies that we thought were probably new were 10 years old. Well, that's it. And I, mean, I, I mean, this newest Candyman is, it was in the era where there's been such a resurgence of horror. Yeah. And Jordan Peele's a big part of that with Get Out, with Get Out oh, being of course, yeah. huge, quiet place. No denying, no denying his accomplishments. No denying his earlier ability of being a storyteller. Yeah. Oh, no, I think, I think he has a storyteller. Lately, I think he just... Some of the comments he's made lately are just ridiculous. And some, and what, and some of the movies he's made lately are just ridiculous. And he's got lost in his own message in air quotes. Yeah. And that's the problem with him. Like, because when you make Get Out, he wasn't trying to be this uh, horror story slash political a- a- activist. And then people are like, oh, I love the way your message resonated with me. He goes, well, I guess my message resonated with you. I guess all my movies have to contain a message. They don't. They don't. So no. Entertain me, motherfucker. Yeah. And you're not. I worry about it's secondary. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? I, like, I, I do get it. Growing up, growing up and not seeing yourself represented, I do, I do get it. Um, I, at least I, as best as I can, but I, I, I think there's an overcorrection. Yeah. If you decide that this, this one, this one thing is what I do now. Yeah. I and, make uh, a, uh, ra- racial horror movies for yeah, lack of a better term. Yeah, racial horror movies. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's like, and I, and which is the thing? Like, I mean, Get Out. I, I have no complaints about because it was entertaining. It's as fuck. Movie. The message was was excellently yeah. sewn in, and, and it was thought provoking. It was sewn in. Yeah. Exactly. Sewn in. It's part of the fabric. Yeah. Not like a patch that's just slapped on top of it. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? That's the big difference, I like, guess, isn't it? Yeah, it absolutely is. And then again, to go back to the shadow point, I just wanted to see when I watched the first one, I was like, there it is. There's my kills. Yeah. There's my people getting thrown through walls and stuff yeah, like it's that. It's like, I want to be able to ask myself the question afterwards, how did he saw that Rottweiler head off? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> he had a hook. That's the thing Yeah, everyone has to understand. His weapon of choice is a hook. Yeah. It's a devastating weapon. Yeah. It can do horrible things to of the course. human body. It's um, a meat hook, pretty much. Yeah, it? it's yeah. a meat hook. Yeah, and but it's not. It's not a cutting tool. It's not a sawing tool. Yeah, it's a hooking tool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you pull the rock while you head off, that I would guess. Yeah, but no. Maybe, even when yeah. it, even when uh, he shows up and he kills the I don't know a psychologist or something, and he frees Helen from her straps, and he just kind of goes and he just like perfectly cuts them off and I was like that's a hook <laughs> <laughs> how sharp is that hook? <laughs> like you pull you could create like a fulcrum you could create leverage yeah it's a hook yeah. stop slicing things the like. thing is 
He has a free hand. He has a free open hand. Open the straps. <laughs> open the straps. It would have been cool. I got you. Like, haha, I've got you now. Wait, I know. Sorry, I just wait. Just one second. Is, How, who fucking is it? Who yeah. made this buckle? Yeah. <laughs> Windsor? Is this a Windsor? <laughs> anyway, be my victim. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, the sweet uh, caress of death. And um, one second, fucking buckle. <laughs> it's really hard here. I'm, I'm a disabled man. Give me yeah, a moment. Yeah. <laughs> I have one hand, and my, and my rib cage is. Bees. <laughs> <laughs> One could say mostly I'm in a B and A. Oh. <laughs> and on that note, we go to the break. We're going to the break. <laughs> All right, folks. This is Invasion Party Snatch. See you after the break. Now, work more sponsors. Yes, kids, you too can own one of the big Halloween three. That's right, three horrific masks to choose from. They're fun, they're frightening, and they glow in the dark. Welcome back from the break. This is Invasion of Poly Snatchers. So, Noel, all right, we left off. Um, at the first half, we were talk- breaking down Candyman 1, Candyman 2. Sorry, not Candyman 2, the Candyman reboot. And we leaned on the differences in the style of storytelling, the subtleties in the story. In the way yeah. the story was. I think wherever you going. fall on this, there's, there's, there's yeah. no doubt that one was subtle and one wasn't. Yeah, exactly. And that's like, the, yeah. Even if you completely agree with the, the yeah. message. And I actually do agree with the messages of these films. Oh, if, I, if, I, if I was to fall on it, agree or don't that's agree. The I, that's the yeah. thing. I actually yeah. do. Yeah. I, 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 and we were talking. It's not I, worse than you agree with something, but you hate the way it's told. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. ham fisted. Yeah. I, and, and like I said, when and, and at the near the end of the second film where the cops show up, and you know there's a guy prone on the ground in the open fire which cops which there's thousands of examples that have been given to us over the years of cops being uh, trigger happy yeah. quick to, absolutely but this was just they just all shut up and then got her in the car and then starts saying we're going to plant evidence on you and we're going to you know you're send going you to for life. send you away for life and stuff like that and it was like I almost expected it at this point yeah. that, that that they were they were going to show up and do that and I, I'm a fucking pretty left leaning fucking guy yeah. but I was just like I, it's the clearest way of yeah. what you say. It's how you say it. Yeah, and I, I, it? especially if somebody's going to show, especially if somebody's going to show up and have a heavy impact on it. There's one thing, like I mean, cops are always the best, uh, bro, because there's always like a cop and his job is to lift up the yellow tape when the characters actually matter are going to yeah. duck in. You know, the detectives and and yeah. the cops are always these kind of background characters. But if you're going to have one show up and have an impact, yeah, flesh them out somehow. Yeah. They didn't at all. Maybe have him come in an earlier scene. Exactly. You, you know what I mean? So you have running through the film. So when he shows up, you kind of think, fuck, she's in trouble now because this guy is a racist piece of yeah. shit. Like, you know? The detective that was uh, um, like in part one, do you remember the detective that said, we don't need the kid's story, we have you, that guy? Yes. And the way he ran through the story in part one. Yeah. And they fleshed him out. And they, they never did that in part two. They just like, here. I think he was in an earlier scene, if I remember correctly, but they never fleshed oh, the, the same yeah. cop. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't, they never fleshed them out. Yeah, I think, like, especially nowadays, in such a divisive time, I think you shouldn't show, like, like when you look at cops, right? I, I know at the moment in America, it's very divisive at the moment. Yeah, and we're no experts. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, I'm here 3,000 miles away. Who the fuck am I? Never stepped in America in my life. But I'm looking at it from an outsider in murder, right? And everyone, can, it's clear to see. Everyone knows. There's massive racial, racial tension in America. Yeah. And there's massive tension with the black communities and minority communities in America with the police force, especially after the whole George Floyd thing, the Black Lives Matter movement, especially like about, about a year. Ahmed Avery is like, the one I'm following right now. Yeah, the like, the jogger, like, that was awful. You know what I mean? And it's like uh, that the guy's in the pickup truck. Is yeah, the, yeah, with a confederate. Pretty fucking... much drove him down and then murdered him. Yes, you know 100%. I mean? And yeah. I don't care what to say. It, it doesn't matter. Even if he broke into a house, which their story is, you would still murder that guy. Yeah, and he did. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Even if, like, at the end of the day, it's cold blooded murder. Yeah. But, like, what I'm saying is that th- this racial tension, and it's clear in America, everyone can see, even though I'm, I'm an outsider or whatever. But it, do you really need to lean on these buttons right now? And that's what this movie did. Yeah. It pressed on all these buttons, hoping to get this reaction. Everything you, you do should I mean? first and foremost be for the, the film. Yeah, it should be the benefit like of the, the story. The film. Yeah. And then if you're like, if you can, uh, if Black Klansman, Spike Lee, it was a fucking excellent film. Yeah, where it just, driver, everything was it. interwoven and it was able to tell quite an expansive, dangerous film. John in kind, David Washington. In, in kind of a, a, almost satirical and very heavy at times, but it was a, it was a well-handled film. 
Um, I, I thought that if you want to do that, then there's plenty of material going back to work with. Yeah, you have um, a whole trilogy that you can Yeah, but I thought with. there was a lot on this that just wasn't to the benefit of the film. Yeah. And I understand wanting social justice and I understand want, wanting equality. Um, but I, 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 at the same time, like you said, it's not a civics lesson. Yeah, exactly. it's a horror movie. Yeah, it's a slasher movie. Yeah, it's a slasher at that. Uh, you know? Because the, the slasher subgenre of horror, it has to be quick. The pace yeah. it has to be perfect. It has to be not only action packed. It has to be filled with gore, filled yeah. with kills. Like slashers don't have to be. If it be gory, whatever John Carpenter says, never spill a drop or whatever, and it comes back to the whole suspense. You can tell your story like that. But yeah. this didn't tell the story through suspense. Like I can say. All right, cool. If you want to say, I'm going to chill back on the gore and I'm going to lean on suspense. Yeah. Cool. Pick a different fucking franchise. That yeah. doesn't belong in the Candyman franchise. And considering how you know, absolutely amazing. Like, here's the thing. Like, I, it's easy for me to sit and criticize a film. Jordan Peele is a really good filmmaker. Yeah. It's supposed well, to be. Well, no, he, he was one time. Well, he, he made, made a, a really, good really film. good film. He made a, there's two completely different things. Well, yeah. Well, us wasn't a bad film. I just thought it was. The it second was, half of the movie's trash. Yeah. Yeah, the twist at the end wasn't great either. Yeah, and we could see it coming like 600 miles away. Yeah, yeah. I like, saw that movie, co- I saw the twist and I was coming when I saw Get Out. That's actually, I, 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 I saw it in the trailer <laughs> of Get Out, I said what the twist was. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Actually, no, in like, the trailer. Like, um, I, I just, but I still love that movie. It was people say Jordan Peele's a good storyteller. No, he's a, he made a good movie. And at, at that, like, he only co-wrote this movie. Nina Costa wrote, um, directed it. Like, so it's her story. She told it. But his message was clear for all to see, and maybe she obviously shares the same sentimentalities. Yeah. But I just think when there's a there's a time when racial tensions are so high, why press on the buttons, and why make a more divisive movie? And again, not one to sweep a, something under the carpet, but this course, isn't under the carpet. You can make a unified a unifying movie whilst telling the same. Yeah. Why not have a show white people and black people? Being good, being together, being uh, sharing no, actually positive make them whatever you want. Just make the story make sense. Yeah. I, I won't even mind if all of the people of this persuasion or that persuasion, the men or the women, I yeah. wouldn't care where they fall if it just felt like they were just trying to make a film and everything else. Yeah. Like I said, it's it's world. This wasn't world building. I think it tried yeah. to be world building, and it was too heavy handed in its messaging. I, I maybe it will. I mean, it made seventy seven million dollars yeah. off twenty five million dollars, something like in that. In a post pandemic era. In a post pandemic so, era, so and you know, need a cost that. Yeah, and, and I'd say if he drops, like, you you sorry. kind of said if he drops. They dropped that on HBO or something like that. Yeah. Now you know five or five quid a pop. They'll make a few million that way as oh, 100%, well. Oh, hundred percent. So yeah, no, it made money. And DVD, Blu-ray sales. DVD, all Blu-ray. That. Yeah, I just I, you know like I mean without getting into the pistol political messaging, if you if you took all of that away, this is a weak movie. That, and this original one is a very strong movie. That that's the thing. Like you take all the political messaging away in the first one, it's still a top class slasher yeah. movie. Yeah. You know, and that's uh, like that's exactly when you literally. To trim it down, you take away the messaging. One's a weak ass movie with massive lulls. In a 90 minute movie, you're never supposed to have lulls. No. And the other one is you take away the pol- political stuff, the racial tension, all that. It's still a world class slasher movie. Yeah. The grey kills, inventive kills, using a hook in ways that we never knew a hook could be used. Yeah, before. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, the physics would dictate that it couldn't be used. But... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's like I, I really want to see that Rottweiler kill. Yeah, I want to see the Rottweiler kill. She yeah. just wakes up because I know Candyman's obviously killing the Rottweiler, but I bet you that Rottweiler did not go down without a fight. No, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, I was thinking, like, fucking dude, like, I get it, you're mad, and you have every right to be mad. The dogs, though, what the fuck did the dogs do? Uh, like, people suck, yeah. but dogs, I'm sure the dog tried to attack as soon as she came into the what well, I was saying, well, again, like, it's that great thing that you're able to do in horror films that have mythological or, or uh, supernatural is the word I was looking for yeah. bad guys is like he, did he did he just transport her there teleport her there he's how is he man. you know he's candy man he's yeah. actual it's always you're allowed to be so vague with mm. what their power sets are he's like, I think it's the case and, of he possesses them yeah. or he holds them under some sort of troll oh do you think he did he actually, he actually made her do that yeah I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he killed the Rottweiler and she cut the head off Right. That's maybe what it might be. I think it's a case of like when you see with uh, uh, Yaya Abdul Mateen the second in the in the reboot, slowly he's becoming more and more influenced. Yeah. Like I think maybe like when we see like when he walks out of the room, Candyman kills. Is 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 it yeah, Candyman? Yeah. That's and this killed? time you actually see him leave. Like he leaves, leaves. Yeah. He's not in on the premises. You know what I mean? So I think it might be a case of he might hold. Is he's, he's like attached to him, like you say, or is like it might be hold him under a troll. I don't know if he's committing the acts. Or if they're committing the axe, or maybe he's just committing the axe and he's just using them as a fall guy. 
for lack of a better fall person mm. you know what i mean but i just want to kind of remember well, during the, the 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 art critics kill they had like it was essentially all glass panel window mm -hmm. uh wall a glass panel wall and you could just see her getting murdered you could i don't know like it gave us this disconnect from him and Candyman, but obviously that line was becoming thinner and thinner yeah um and I, like again when you say something like that it sounds like it's kind of cool because she comes back at the end of part one too and he says helen so yeah he looks in the mirror and says helen yeah, because he, would... he's talking about how he's going to take away what you're afraid of. And he's like, you're afraid of death or you're afraid of what comes after or some shit like that. Yeah. And what does he say? The, the, or no, you're afraid of the pain of death or something. And he said the pain is like what? It's like ecstasy or some shit like that. Isn't there some shit? Yeah. Um, Try to sell her on it. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, like, but I, I think it might be a case of like, yeah, maybe he lives in some sort of, maybe this like mirror dimension or something. Yeah. And he drags you with him. And once he's attached to you, yeah. Yeah. Especially if you've called upon him. And what do you make of like the portrayal of Candyman in this? Because like we kind of like harped a bit too much on. We kind of we fell into that trap, I think. Yeah, we did. Bit. No, we did. We like harped bit, on. We, we, harped we probably on fell much. into the same trap that the story. I think we. I think any time you're talking about something along the lines of racism, we have to be so careful what you say, and you overcorrect, and you're trying to step on yourself, stepping on yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know what I mean. Like so. And, uh, but, and, so let's not do what they did and ignore the story. So I want to look at what you make of this new iteration of Candyman, not Yaya yeah, yeah, Abdul Mateen, but like I'm talking about this new guy, um, this, uh, oh shit, what was his character's name? Um, the guy that was supposed to be in a killer who's supposed to be putting razor blades and kids' uh, candies. And he was like, I think he was supposed to be a guy that might be a bit slightly um, uh, uh, mentally disabled or something. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but harmless. Yeah, but harmless, you know. And, yeah. and he was like, he came out of the walls and the cops, like, you know, fucking laid ways to him immediately. Uh, like, oh, it ran down and killed him absolutely instantly. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, which, you know, happens a lot in this movie. But like, and uh, to, share, uh, to go away from that political shit, to go back to the actual killers, like, what did you think of this new portrayal? And what do you think was the idea behind a new Candyman going away from Tony Todd? Leaning, I don't mind them leaning so much on the uh, uh, Yaya yeah, Abdul and maybe bringing through new Candyman for the, the trilogy because of Tony Todd's age. But what do you make of not having Tony Todd in, having a replacement Candyman? And what do you think of Yaya's portrayal as the new Candyman? I thought Yaya actually did a really, really good film. I thought it was wasted resource, like you could put, use your word. Yeah. I thought this film that harkens back to a conversation we had earlier. We were looking at a logo for us, for ourselves, and I said to you that I like the logo to be kind of simple. And it's that balance of have it be functional, but yeah. don't have it, don't put all bells and whistles on it for absolutely no reason. Yeah, yeah. This film was no just... No need for neon signs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This film, there was so much bells and whistles, like yeah. so much that you kind of lost it. And in, I, 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 in the I, noise of all the bells and whistles. Yeah, yeah that's much, kind of it. You know, I really, I really just did. I felt, I felt disconnected from it. Um, so I, I I don't think it was a good enough intro. Now, it could be a case where they kind of say, well, here's what people are saying to us. No, I mean, what do you think of the candy man? No, I, I, the I, story, Tony like... Todd, Tony Todd, ride or die. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Todd, ride or die. And what do you, what do you, but mean? I love it. It's like, I mean, you could take it, what happened to him during slave era. Yeah. Uh, and then you could have what actually was still going on. The heavy handed racisms of the eighties, of the nineties yeah. of today. And and you can you can and obviously why not like Candyman is this concept, yeah. And I get that, but and and that would have worked. But again, it was everything was so ham fisted that I didn't I didn't enjoy him. Yeah, I didn't get to enjoy him because you didn't get to see him. You didn't get to have a presence. It was just lost under. What was the idea? Do you think of the, the new Candyman? Though? I just wanted to say, like, I, I think it's 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 uh saying that well, all of this horrible shit, like we say, oh, back then they were able to like you know lynch you and torture you to death. Um, but like that's not to say that horrible shit didn't happen in more recent times. Yeah. And obviously they just took the Candyman into a time where somebody who's alive now would remember as a child. And yeah. I, I think it was the late seventy. When 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 was it? It was. Um. So who was the who was the kid at the start? It was, it was the Cole, guy who Cole was the laundrette, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. Coleman Domingo. Yeah. So I assume he's playing someone maybe in his forties, so thirty years ago. So yeah, what, 70s, yeah. 80s? I think it was his seventies or something. Yeah, late seventies. So it just showed that yeah, but like a horrible. That this was horrible and this was a particularly terrible period by any kind of metric. Of course, but that's not to say horrible shit didn't happen more recently. And again, that would if you if it's a world where the hatred and vengeance and horror that you can be experienced can be turned into something like eternal or something primordial. Yeah. Um. Then why not more recent? Yeah. And that actually makes sense to me. I understand there's many candy men throw yeah throw history, and he was just the first one. Daniel Robitel, Robitel, I think is his name. 
Yeah, uh, I did. I did like in the the new one where they told some of the story narratives with these kind of cut paper cutouts. Bastards in the cheat sheet just says, "As the candy man." <laughs> <laughs> you bastards. <laughs> um, and he was actually just a man who was giving out candy. Yeah, like it's still a creepy ass thing to do, though. Be a man giving out kids candy. But that's it. If he, was, if he was intellectually disabled, and he was, you know that. He probably just had the maturity uh, yeah. of, of somebody younger than, than he's... Than he just he's didn't understand what he was doing. Yeah, he didn't Especially understand. Especially in an era where people were fucked up and putting razor blades in candy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the fuck and they wanted people? somebody to blame. And it is such uh, it is always such a thing. It's that that blame the strange kid. Yeah. And it's kind blame of like, the odd guy. Wasn't it like in Killer Mockingbird? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like straight away, they, they turn around and they turned on black guy. It's now kind of what yeah. it is. And to be honest with you... I have literally no problem with that style of storytelling because that's accurate and it makes sense. And it's not too heavy handed because that stuff happens. Yeah. But the heavy handedness that went along in the other story. The intentionally heavy handedness. Yeah, exactly. It yeah. distracted me from. Yeah. I, if you want to give me a you want to give me a new candy man that's not Tony Todd, you better dedicate a lot of that fucking movie to telling me who this fucking candy man is. Yes. And be really clear and build up that story in the same way that they did in the original candy man. Because the entirety of the candy man, the first one. Was her literally chasing the mythos. Exactly. For, for a and, thesis. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know what I mean? And slowly but surely, she un, she uh, peeled back a layer, peeled back a layer, like Shrek and his mm. onions. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. She, um, keep peeling back them fucking layers. And then all of a sudden, by the time you peel back the wrong layer, Here's Candyman. Here's Candyman, yeah. And the wrong layer was you stop believing in him. Yeah. And as soon as you stop believing in someone that lives on fear, they're going to make you fucking fear. It's yeah. like in Freddy versus Jason. Freddy's like, they don't believe in us anymore. The kids, they don't scare, you know what I mean? So I'm going to make them afraid. Yeah. And then he brings back Jason Voorhees because the way he feeds on fear, I need to, if I need something in the real world, give them the fear, you know, that kind of way. Yeah, yeah. It's so, sustenance, literal sustenance. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So like, that, that, that's what I... But Dre, I don't really know what the new Candyman was really about. That's what I'm saying. You know what that's I mean? I, I actually like, don't. If you're going to replace someone that's iconic, like I'll put Candyman yeah, up Tony Todd had a presence. Yeah, you know he had a he, he had He had a he had a gravitas and a weight mm, about him when yeah, he, when he, he showed up. he never had to raise his voice. He only no. every scene, like, you know what I mean? No, like, and he, oh God. He, saying, like, you know, like, like just slowly revealing the hook. He just had, yeah. oh, it was lovely. Maybe like just, a pinhead, a grey heart. I'm like, he's like, never spoke loudly. As soon as he's there, you're shit covered because you're just, terrified of yeah because it's he's, you know his I mean? whole thing is not that he knows crab mcgah yeah or, or, or that you know he, he's an mma fighter no 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 yeah. no no bitch none of that co even comes into it yeah exactly. you can't comprehend what yeah. he is like he you know? will just bring you pain and just torment, bring you, yeah and in a way that you don't even understand it can be brought to you like you know what i mean yeah he's going to break you mentally mm. and destroy you physically simultaneously yeah and that's what a freddy krueger does that's what a pinhead does Maybe less so Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers. Well, they were all yeah, yeah. they're more hunter killers. Yeah, you know what I mean. Less but they're like 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 a an out of control eighteen yeah. wheel truck. But yeah. you know what I mean. Like it is just destruction. Yeah, it's, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's like a tornado. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean. Whereas this is kind of like a slow building hurricane. Yes. You know what I mean. Whereas like you're on the edge of it. It's category four, category yeah. four, category four, and you're terrified. You're terrified. You're terrified. And it's broken you mentally before it ever makes landfall. Oh, absolutely. And it yeah. Crushes you fucking physically. And Tony Todd is what. I mean, of hate yeah and i love that i love just the like kruger it was um just maniacal fun yeah like this is this is how and he got his job revenge though for him oh yeah yeah on you know the parents I mean? and stuff yeah. as well but essentially he was still just doing what he did mm. in life anyway you know yeah. this was because he was but, a fucking yeah. animal pederast. michael myers and jason are kind of indifferent they just would rather you He's dead a fucking so. pederast <laughs> fucking pederast <laughs> and uh but this but like T Tony Todd was a creature of just un unabashed hate and I just love that that's what I'm saying because that's, like, that's a horror and it makes sense to you yeah I can understand the hate that he would have like if I had that so well. upon me like if I was uh, my father who was uh, I've been the son of a slave my father I was able to raise up against all the odds and become a man of wealth, a man of means and send me to a proper education where I can live in a world that he could never even fucking imagine yeah and all of a sudden my one crime in life Right, is not to have a talent because my talent puts me in circles that makes people uneasy. It's kind of like what they say in the reboot, which I really liked. I think it was Coleman Domingo said it they, they love what we make, but not us. Yeah, you know what I mean? Which I thought was a beautiful line. That's yeah. clever storytelling. That's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful writing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, I heard some dickheads say that, you know what I mean? That, like, um, rock and roll is about teenage, white teenage angst, and then Barack Obama came along and it was like, bitch, what? 
Yeah. Who who the fuck do you think started rock and roll? Yeah, exactly. Who the fuck? You know what I think mean? Otis Blackwell and Chuck Berry were yeah. sitting around going, white teenage angst. That's, that's, yeah, that's yeah. what we got. That's what we're exactly fucking... Exactly, though. You know what I mean? So I just think that's fucking beautiful cheap. storytelling. Like, yeah. that tells a message without hammer necking it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, don't fucking shove it down my throat. That no. is a beautiful spoon fed. Like, they, lo- they, c- they love what we make, but they can't love us. I yeah. That's beautiful. And it harkens back to Candyman, Daniel Robitaille's story. That, um pretty much he pretty much they loved what he made because he was a beautiful uh, portrait painter yes and but they could never love him they could never see him as an equal so when he fell in love with a woman of means a white woman of means her father found out i think she became pregnant i think they mentioned father finds out he exacts a horrible revenge pays mercenaries to go out to mur- uh, murder him and be creative i think coleman domingo says i'm not sure if that's in the original um but like i've seen that more recent so it pops in my head but like i just think that you could tell that story and I can understand it. And I don't need to be a black person. I don't need to be a person from uh, slave ancestry, yeah. even though many Irish people are like yeah. from slave ancestry. But I can understand the rage that that can be held into a person throughout eternity, like the yeah. crow, like the Brandon Lee. Yeah. I can understand a rage so great that will hold on to for eternity and then I'll rise you from the dead yeah, yeah. to enact your revenge, like in the crow, because if someone does that, I can understand that with Candyman. I don't have to be what he is to resonate with his story, for his story to resonate with yeah, me to understand it. And, and you don't need it's to... It's a story of injustice. And exactly, it's a story on a human, le- yeah. on a human level. And it doesn't just matter like... who he is. I, the injustice, yeah. that resonates with me and the level of hate you would feel of that level of injustice. You would get. That I understand completely. Yeah, and, and that's one thing I loved about the Candyman. You said he's just a character full of hate and rage yeah. that I can understand unapologetically so whereas Freddy Krueger you're like dude you're getting revenge because they killed you for raping their children yeah I think you should leave that one alone yeah exactly and draw and move on you know like, what I mean he was the only one that actually had not not that you can understand that he was killing people indiscriminately like like stupid kids that were just doing it as a dare and stuff but you like could that. understand the rage he holds but, on to but the rage he holds on to the, the, how, how it could actually twist your mind it's how the last thing you rage could, is blind but imagine like that the last second you're alive on this earth Imagine that not being your last second. Imagine just being able to take that and keep it. Yeah. That you before you die, your mind would become so twisted. Yeah. So that's what was so cool about Candyman, and it was and it made sense, and it and it could have been carried forward. And honestly, if you, when you when you storyboard it, what about this? You're kind of going, yeah, that's cool, yeah. but it's not as cool as this. Yeah, exactly. This is fucking excellent. Yeah. And it's understandable on such a human level. Like. Yeah, and it's just that's to say exactly, it's understandable on a human level. Like where this other guy. His story doesn't resonate as much with me, this new Candyman, because no. the other one, not only did it resonate with me when I heard it the first time, but that mythos has sat there for 20 odd years. Yeah. And Tony Todd's still fucking alive. Yep. And he's still in good health. He's still he's still lean. He could still do a movie. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So why do we need to introduce this new Candyman? Like, if I'm doing a reboot, is the whole point of the reboot, something like I mentioned in the first half, is to introduce new audience to the original mythos in yeah. a new way. Why do I need a new character? Yeah, if, if you're Yaya... good enough, if it's good enough to have Tony, <laughs> if Tony Todd isn't good enough, have yeah. it, then there's no reason he should not be in it. Like if Yaya Abdul Mateen is going to be the new Candyman henceforth, going into the next run, right? Why distract me with a, a, a secondary Candyman or no, a tertiary Candyman? Tertiary Candyman. Because Yaya becomes the secondary one if he's yeah. going to be the one that carries the franchise forward from Tony Todd, who, yeah. in my opinion, everyone's opinion, is the primary Candyman. Yeah. So if you're going to, and replace... Anthony's story doesn't, why doesn't do I need hold a middle the candle? One? Yeah. So to, to the tragedy, like it was, uh, as his life was unfolding, it was it was terrible, but it was it didn't have the gravitas. Yeah, because he's where's his injustice? Where's his injustice compared? Yeah, compared to fucking because he got killed at the end. He got killed. Yeah, the fact that he was prone that's unjustified. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Remember, somebody did ring in, which was Coleman Domingo, pretended to be a historical person, said there was a person with a hook, also well publicized murder spree going on yes. in the build up to this yeah. all around his works of art so everyone's kind of half looking at um, Anthony McCoy and see what's going on here yeah. the message saying my name is the name that's the same title of his painting so with the police come in they're investigating a murder obviously what they do when shooting him when he's prone on the ground is rid- ridiculous but they're obviously and heightened it- because of the circumstances I just mentioned yeah 
Oh, it's not. It's not just. It's not justified, and I get. Oh, hundred percent not justified. Yeah, and of course, and that gave him. But it's it just. I don't know if. And what if, happens afterwards is abhorrent. If you're trying to like, build you know. on something, you know, like if you're trying to world build, I always say that not necessarily bigger is better, but I, but better is always better. Yeah. Better yeah. is always better than worse. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so if you say, "Here's our story," well, here's our new one. It goes, "No, this, yeah. this, this yeah. is better." I just think if you're trying to introduce me to a brand new candy man, don't distract me with a middle ground candy man. No. Why? Because uh, like the whole way through the movie, and this is the second time I've seen it because we've seen it in the cinemas together, like you said earlier. Um, all I kept saying was, "Why am I seeing this dude?" That's all I kept thinking in my head. It's like I understand, yeah, yeah, doing Mateen's character. I understand his his journey. I understand what we're what we're doing, the positioning of him, his story's progress, the evolution of his narrative. I totally understand that, and I understand Candyman because of part one and the way it told its story. Who the fuck's this middle dude? Yeah. Why is it sex up? I mentioned one of the other ones. I want to see these Nexus events. I don't want to see the middle ground. I don't like to see. I want to see a Steve Rogers and I want to see um, a Sam Wilson. I don't need to see an Isaiah Bradley and an Alexi. I don't need to see all these tertiary and secondary yeah. characters. Show me the main guys. Tell me yeah. the real stories because all of this does is distract away from the specialness of the stories that yeah. I really want to concentrate on. And so if there's several different candy men, so special about the, the strife of Daniel Robitel. Yeah, you you just stop distracting away from. It's a good point. You know what I mean. If, like if you said this had like uh, the tar- Spider Man three kind of vibes, where if you wanted to talk about uh, police brutality, racial injustice, um, what do you call it? Where people move in gentrification, gentrification yeah. um, classism, yeah, exactly. racism. Yeah. If you want to do that, do that. But re- re- realize that a film is ninety minutes long. Yeah, exactly, and it's a slasher. And it's a slasher. High pace subject. That's it. That's all. That that, yeah. that would be my. Just realize this night. I mean, it's on. If you want to talk about priest brutality, talk about it. Make and if you want, if you want to, make, to talk about priest brutality, make a film about it. Yeah. And that can be all about it. You have ninety minutes. Yeah. Make a film. Yeah. And 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 I don't know. I, it was it was definitely too many too many chefs in the kitchen. Way yeah. too many chefs. Three writers in, in a ninety minute movie is never a good sign. No. And no. especially one of them's Jordan Peele, and that's something I mean in Jordan Peele's because his star power. Yeah. I bet you his voice carried a lot more weight in those writing sessions. Possibly, yeah. Than Nia DaCosta. And sorry, I keep forgetting the third writer's name. Um, Win Rosenfield. So, like, you, know, you, you don't even get a mention. You're the third writer. <laughs> but, um, so, probably wrote most of it. Yeah, yeah, but, it, yeah. yeah, exactly. They were probably firing ideas. And yeah. He's a typist. Like, or when, I don't know if it's a, a man or a woman. Win is a weird. What's Winifred, maybe? I think a woman. Yeah, Winifred, maybe. Yeah. I think it's a woman. Winston, like. though, for a dude? Yeah, maybe. Uh, dude, just use your full name. Stop confusing people. Or woman, stop confusing people by not using your full name. Madam. I got like a little midgy flying at my head. <laughs> it was like fucking dodging him. But all I, I, I do, I, I thought it was just like, you know, I think it turns out that you end up telling five stories badly. Yeah. Instead it's, of telling one story well. Yeah, or just two stories. Because all you need to do is tell me the stories. Like I said earlier, introduce me to the new candy man, Yaya Abdul-Mateen, and reestablish my central antagonist. Tony Todd, Daniel Robitel. Yeah. That's all you need to do. If someone goes to me, you got 90 minutes. I'm like, all right, I've got 90 minutes. You want me to do two stories? Okay, I've got this. Yeah. I don't need to tell you. I can I can encapsulate the, the personal side. The pl- interweaving. Yeah, yeah, I can interweave. Exactly. That's what you do, slowly but surely. But I, I think when you have all this backstory, you have his girlfriend's backstory, you have his backstory, and you have this backstory, and you have this backstory, and this backstory. 90 minutes goes by, like... It should go by like this, and they're like, "Oh my god, that was amazing!" Yeah, and I, I, I got four rock stories, and I got three candy men. That was incredible. I was like, "Yeah, yeah." Got, my, oh my god, my tooth is aching. I've eaten so many candy men. Right yeah, now. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and you're like, "That was amazing." But I just mentioned four or five back stories and three candy men, and yet there were still three or four different periods of lulls in the storyline yeah. where it just slowed down to a snail's pace, and I was just like, "What the fuck." Who is this dude? Why do I need a new Candyman? Yeah. Why then you, at the end, Tony Todd is back as Candyman. You're like, is he? What? Yeah. Like, <laughs> or are, I suppose or every, the every generation, they're all a part of Candyman. Yeah, he's the uh, embodiment. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So it can take on another face. I just, but, that just annoys me. Just reestablish Tony uh, Todd as your central antagonist. Uh, we understand he's aging out of the role because time waits for no man, all this jazz. Right, and I don't want to see a DH Tony Todd in the future with someone else is actually the body. So all you do is bring Tony Todd in throughout this movie. The fucking dude that played the middle ca- candy man must be no sixty anyway. You know yeah, I mean? Not true. Like he was like a young buckaroo that was. No, no, he wasn't a spring chicken. You or know anything, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and like, uh, I just think you concentrate your story on reestablishing the mythos of Tony Todd, 
because it's supposed to be the way for a new generation. We don't need a new candy man. We already got one, right? So if we're going to have a new candy man, we don't need a middle one. So like you reestablish Tony Todd, you scare the fuck out of us the whole way through the movie. Then in the final sequence, you can have Coleman Domingo's descent into madness, his like belief in the the Tony uh, the Candyman fucking mythology, and then you can have it slowly be Abdul uh, um, yeah yeah Abdul Mateen slowly replaces Tony Todd. Final sequence should have been the reverse. Should have been Tony Todd's face disappearing and his face remaining. Yeah, because he's now t- Candyman, and that's your goodbye. This must have been like, oh, we need to get Tony Todd in here somewhere. I'm taking a last shot of him. Yeah, shitty fan service. Yeah, shitty Give me fan good service. fan service. Yeah, yeah. Because Tony Todd is the film. Yeah. Because he's fucking candy, man. Too many chefs, man. Too you many know what chefs. I mean, though, like... Too many chefs and too much of a political. Like, I mean, there is. It's like Spider Man for... 3, kind of like, you know what I mean? It's like. Yeah, it's Spider Man 3. That's what, it's exactly what I want. 12 other fucking stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see the Candyman story and I want to see the, main, the central antagonist, central protagonist, yeah. and the, the characters that kind of. Why now from them? You put three bad guys in the film in Spider Man 3, so you told three stories badly. Yeah, instead of telling one story coherently. Yeah. And that's uh, what this film That's did. what this film did. Yeah, it told too many too many stories um and gave not enough of them uh, uh gave none of them enough screen time. Yeah. And because of that you had these lulls where fifteen minute story that was never really touched upon later on in the film felt like instead of character development, it felt like time wasted. Yes. Because there was no further development in that time that was spent. You know what I mean? <clears throat> But, um, so Noel, what do you think when you weigh up the two of them? Because we kind of focused heavily on the reboot. We did, yeah. Because recency bias, I know, and it's in the consciousness. And a lot of people have been talking about it. It's a very divisive movie for yeah. all the reasons we mentioned. And because of what we do, we went back and watched the first one. Yeah. Yeah, and so, like, it's not, it's not exactly like it's in the public consciousness. Yeah. But I thought, I suppose, I suppose, to, I forgot there was even ones in the middle, but the polarity. Yeah. One was a film that, that spoke on things like racial injustice in a way that that was thought provoking and in a way that made it in a way that didn't take away from the story in fact it just bled and it was sewn into it and it had really good kills really really drawn me in the 19 i i well, i couldn't believe that film was over when it was over yeah. because i i was just sitting in my bedroom alone longer. yeah i i just went uh, upstairs and i said you know i'll just watch this on my laptop and chill out up here for and next thing you know i thought it was like 30, 40 minutes later and I was at the end of a film. Yeah. And the other one I thought, again, That's I the thought the polarity is the slog. Yeah. The slog in a second. We'll take yeah. it out. Like, and it's 20 minutes I'd lean too yeah. heavily on political <laughs> messages and that, but it, it was just, yeah, too, too, too much, too much resulting in too little. Yeah, I think it's a case of, if you have to understand, right, this is what I always say about reboots, why I fight, fight, feel it's so lazy. There's a very easy way if you give me a year, and I'll promise this, this is a word, right? This, I'm going to put this out into the world. If you give me a year with any co- pre-existing franchise in its current state, I would be able to incorporate every single movie into one continuity in one year, no matter the franchise, without having to remake, reboot, retake, whatever to read, whatever you want to stick in front of any franchise in the world. Especially Halloween, we're going to talk about that because that's some of the laziest ass story. I can incorporate all those kids in two sentences, two fucking sentences. I can have her with three children, and I don't have to reboot universe. I yeah. can make him her sister, and do all this. I can. I tell you something. I hate when people reboot, right? Because you already have something that's established in Candyman One. There's no need to reboot. No need to introduce characters that are unnecessary. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it just distracts away. And I think that's this is what the problem with this film is that it this it forgets that complicates without explaining it's that it's yeah it's that and it forgets the franchise that's operating within because yeah. i the, i kind of got lost on my own point but like the when you're operating in a certain franchise you have to withhold the style that's already in that franchise yeah. so if you're in because there is a template yeah it's exactly. just in a first this is a reboot there is yeah, a template exactly so when you're rob zombie and you make a gore filled halloween you're missing the point because halloween is a suspense franchise you're absolutely right about when that. you go into a hellraiser if you want to have suspense, yeah, but you have to have a shitload of torture and gore. Yeah. Because it's a suspense, but with torture and gore franchise. Yeah. You go into a saw, what do you need? You need a lot of torture devices and gore. Because yeah. that's the franchise. Trapped. And set pieces. Yeah, exactly. It's based on set pieces. And it has to be intricate. Like a fun yeah. destination. That seems intricate. That's that franchise. Yeah. You go into a Candyman franchise, you have to look at the rules set out by the first three movies. And you have to look at the franchise you're operating. The indomitable in. rules. Yeah. Like, you know, five times looking in your own, own reflection exactly. and indomitable rules. Yeah. And the gore, the kills have to be 
very bloody and they have to happen off screen. But when we when we see the effects, it has to be right in your face. Yes. Whereas in this, it was it happened off screen and then we didn't see anything. Yeah. And once again, it forgot in Candyman 1, the things you touched on earlier is all of those things were incorporated into the story, but the, never distracted away from the story. Yeah. And that's how it told the story throughout the franchise. And I'm saying that loosely because I can't really remember part two and three. Yeah, no, but I forgot they existed, I can, so I can't comment. So when I compare part one and part uh, and the reboot in isolation, you look at the franchise you're operating within, if part two and three don't exist because you're rebooting it, so you can only take the rules from the first one, you have to maintain the same team, you have to maintain the same style. Yeah. And the same way it it, it um it uses its kills, it implements its scares. And you have to keep to the root of the mythology. Yeah. And I think it just ignored too much of what part one is. Yeah. And you can't say I'm progressing the story while it's also rebooting it and ignoring so much of the story while you're also like saying yeah. that like, oh, I'm continuing, I'm paying homage, I'm doing this. I don't even know that. what the next Candyman would look like. It was so kind of conflated for me and yeah. complicated. And Well, I, I can imagine the next one's going to be like the girlfriend goes back. Yeah. Or just gonna be oh, a gonna be nine candy men or something. Yeah, you know, you know what I mean. I that's, don't know. Like that's the problem. Like it, yeah. if you keep distracting away from the special, what makes these characters special? They're not gonna be special anymore. You you keep giving me 15, 20 super soldiers, you keep giving me 40 black widows, you're you're distracting away from your Natasha Romanovs, your Steve Rogers, your Sam Wilsons, your Yavanas, uh, uh, what's her sister's name? But uh, Florence Pugh's character. Yeah. But you're distracting away from the main characters that I really want to concentrate on. Candyman is the fucking title of the movie. Who's Candyman? Danny Robitel. Who's Danny Robitel? Tony Todd. That's who should be in the movie. Yeah. That's who should be the focus. That should be your central antagonist. And you want to continue? Yeah, yeah, I'm doing my team. That's totally cool. But for the reboot, the entirety of the movie should be centered on replacing Tony Todd with him. And stop fucking distracting me with this middle ground, this political nonsense that doesn't need to be... It, no, it can be in the movie. It's not that it doesn't need to be in the movie. Of course, it can be in the movie. Of course, you can tell political stories to any forum. But it shouldn't be what the movie's about. No. It should be a part of the story. Make a documentary. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you could talk about absolutely anything. And I'm sure Jordan Peele will make a great documentary. Nia Da Costa would make a fantastic documentary. But you're operating within the Candyman universe. Yeah. Candyman franchise. You've got to stick to the rules. You've got to stick to the style of to yeah. storytelling. And you got to understand that this has an already ingratiated fan base that exists long before you do as a storyteller in this universe. And you got to give them what they expect. And what do they expect? Yeah. Tony fucking Todd. Yeah. All right. It's like having a Texas Chainsaw Massacre without Leatherface. Like. God, shudder. You know yeah, what I literal mean? Like, shudder at the top. It's like, it's, it's like having a Halloween without Michael Myers. Which they did. Exactly. The fan, it was shit. Exactly, you know what I mean? Like, and it's just like, it's not even that it's shit. We just, we hate it so much because there's no Michael Myers and yeah. you had Halloween written across the top of your, your title. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this way you have Candyman. You didn't give us Candyman. Yeah. So at the end of the day, like, you can say what you want about the political um, overtures in this movie or the ham fist and the heavy handedness of Jordan Peele and Nia Costa and Will Rosenfield storytelling style. But at the end of the day, it just didn't live up to the bill giving us what we wanted and that's fucking candy man yeah and well that's, that's it biggest criticism. Yeah, no, that's it you know what i mean like i think so, you've wrapped it but i think man i think you really have yeah so we get the fuck out here yeah let's get the fuck out of here yeah and um before we get the fuck out here we'll be we'll, i've got here do you want to do it do you want to do it do you want to do it all right we'll do it, we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it. Right. You, you go first <sighs> okay candy man candy man <sighs> candy man I don't know, dude. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know. No, I don't do that. I, I feel like I'm doing it. I feel like I'm tempted to pay. <laughs> Candyman. And um, should we just leave it there? I just think that. Candyman. See, I told you not. <laughs> <laughs>